Welcome back to our class and let's continue with our discussion. Let's go to property number two. In property number two, it talks about the means or extremes exchanging property. What does it say? If A over B is equal to C over D is a proportion, then if you exchange the means, we say D over B equals C over D, like this one, sorry. We exchange these two, we say D over B equals C over A, that should be A. Or another is we exchange these two, look at here, from CB to BC. So they will still be the same because once we cross multiply them, they will get the same answer. So example, three over five equals nine over 15. Let's exchange the extremes. So 15 over five is equal to nine over three because if you check this one is three over five three over five once we will um 15 over five we will exchange them this becomes still three equals three next if we exchange their means it will still get the same answer then ah uh, what happened to this one Actually, this has a double. They made a double switching. First, they switched the numerator and the denominator before they went on the cross. It's still the same. The next one is the upside down property. In the upside down property, you simply switch the numerator and the denominator. Or we say, you simply switch the means and the extremes of the ratio. So example, A over B equals C over D. Then you switch these two. So we have B over A, then C over D, that's D over C. It will still give you the same proportion. Example. 3 over 5 equals 9 over 15. Switch the first one, 5 over 3. Switch the second one, equals 15 over 9. That's property number 3, the upside down property. Let's go to property number 4. The denominator addition or subtraction property. Here, if A over B equals C over D, then... If we add our denominators, it's still the same as we have subtracted our denominators. Example. Three, if 3 over 5 is equal to 9 over 15, you add the, denom the denominator. Then 3 plus 5 is equal to, you add the denominator, 9 plus 15 equals over 15. Why are they the same? Because you see, you're adding 5 over 5. You simply add a whole one, just in fraction. The other one, 15 over 5. That's still one. You're just adding a whole number, but you've written it in fraction form. The same as you will subtract the denominators. They will still get the same answer since we only subtract a whole one, but in fraction form. Let's have the exercises. We determine whether each equation is true. Then we share what proper, under what property. So how do you check it? You see how is the first one different from the second one. So A over 10 equals X over 20. Hmm. Let's see, A over X, what happened? There's a switching, right? But if you switch it, it must be 
A over X equals 10 over 20. Then the right side was simplified to one half. So it's still true. Under property number two. The next one. Here, A over three equals X over four. You check. What's the difference? And three is now up. So it's the upside down property. But in the upside down property, you could just have like that one, right? Why is there having more? You go to property number four. The denominator was added first. Then after adding the denominator, they applied the upside down property. So it's still, is it true or false? It's still true. The next one, number letter C. How is this di different? A over X equals five over four. Mm, what happened? Five is not the bottom. So does it mean there was an exchanging? So we have A over five equals X over four. Then what's the difference? The denominator? Yes, plus five. But here, it's the one added is not four, it's five. Therefore, this is a false. Any questions? No questions? I'll go now to property number five. Now, in property number five, we talk about the geometric mean. So what is the geometric mean? The geometric mean is a positive number. It is this one, the mean. It's, the, it's between numbers A and B. So how do we solve for the geometric mean? The geometric mean is the square root of A times B. Now, what is the geometric mean? A geometric mean is a number between the two extremes. So example. Example class. We have three over five equals six over 10, right? That's how we usually write it. But here, in this example, three and 10, what's between? Five and six, right? But they are different numbers. In a geometric mean, it talks about there's one number A. My pen is no longer working much. There's a number A. This is our X, our geometric mean, and B. So we say, what number is exactly between A and B so that we can write it in this way? So how do we solve for that? You multiply A and B, then you find its square root. That is the geometric mean. Example, we find the geometric mean of 3 and 27. So what do we do again? We multiply 3 times 27, then find its square root. So I have square root of 81. What's the square root of 81 in the chat box? Tell me, what's the square root of 81? Nine. Very good. It's nine. You'll just take the positive answers, okay? Next, what's the geometric mean of six and two? That will 12. be 12. square root of 12, right? 
but you can still simplify square root of 12. What's the answer to that? That's 2 square root of 3. Next. What's the geometric mean of 10 and 20? Square root of 10 times 20. Square root of 200. You can write square root of 200 as 100 times 2. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of two. Next, okay. What's the geometric mean of two and eighteen? In the chat box, ready? What's the geometric mean of two and eighteen? It's easy. What's the geometric mean of two and eighteen? What is 2 times 18? Yes, correct, AP. 2 times 18 is 36. But you need to have the square root, right? What's the square root of 36? Okay, very good, Ali. It's 6. So 2 times 18. Yes, Jared and AP also got it. Very good. That's square root of 36. So the answer is... Six. Sorry about my pen. Now, let's go to the next one. You're almost done. Three more theorems. We have the basic proportionality theorem. What does the basic proportionality theorem state? If a line, if DE like this one, is parallel to a triangle, and it intersects the two sides at a distinct point, then it means that it divides the sides into two proportional segments. Example, in triangle ABC, DE is proportional to BC. So with this one, AE over EC is proportional to AD, this side, over DB. Now, let's have an example. What is the other converse? The converse is, what do you mean by converse? Baliktad, the exact opposite of it. The converse tells us that if AE, this one, over EC, is proportional to AD, over db, then these two lines are parallel. Example, in the given triangle ABC, you first find my pen. DE is proportional, is parallel to BC. Now, if db measures 32 and AD measures 16, EC measures 20, find the measure of AE. We didn't know the measure of AE, so let's have it X. Let's write it now. AD over DB is equal to AE over What's happening to my pen? AE over EC. So we now have 16 over 32 is equal to X over 20. We cross multiply. 16 times 20 is equal to... 32x. Sorry. I think I need to use the annotate now. 
here. 16 times 20 is equal to 32 times x. You divide both sides by 32. So we now have that's one half, 10 equals x. So if you check here, if you check this one, 16 over 32 is one half, right? 10 over 20 is also one half. So it means that our answer for x equals 10 is correct. Now let's go to the last theorem. Let me clear first. The last theorem, oops, wait. The last theorem is a proportional segment on parallel lines. It says that if three or more parallel lines are cut by two or more transversals, these are called transversals. Now what are transversals? These are lines that pass by that cut parallel lines. Then they intercept proportional segments on these transversals. It means GH over HI is proportional to GJ over JK. Let's have the last example. In triangle GHK, here we didn't have any drawing, so you need to draw the triangle. Hope my Hope this one will work good. G, in triangle GHK, find X so that HJ is parallel to IK. If HI is equal to eight, GH is equal to 20, and GJ is equal to 25, and JK is equal to X. Now, with these two, we have, we go back to this figure there. This is GHJ, GHK. Sorry, that must be named GIK. HJ, let me just have this one. HJ is parallel to IK. So if GH is 20, GJ is 25, JK, what's JK? This one is X, G. I still miss one. HI is A. There. That's fine for the measure of JK, X. So we have this and this are over 20 over 8 equals 25, this one, over X. Cross multiply, that's 20 times X equals 8 times 25. So we divide both sides by 20. Our x is equal to 10. So if you check 20 over 8, that's 10 over 4, 5 halves, right? 5 halves. This one is also 5 halves, 5 over 2. Any questions before we dismiss our class?